Before we attack it, though, this thing, you're going to need to know, and at first it looks pretty imposing as far as how are you going to remember it, but let's analyze it. It's very symmetrical. BP over T, BP over T. All the ones are here on the, the left, all the twos are over here. Also to keep in mind, they're not going to say this is V1. They're going to just say something to the effect, you've got a gas and this is its volume, and then we change it to this volume or whatever. So you've got to decide who V1 and who V2 and so forth. So how will we remember this? Years ago, and I can't think of his name right now. Who was the vice president with George Bush, the, the younger George Bush? Anybody remember the vice Cheney. president? Cheney. Cheney. Cheney, yes. It just slipped my, slipped my mind. A senior moment. Okay, Cheney, you know, the vice president, said he was from Wyoming because the president and the vice president could not be from the same state. Well, Cheney really lived in Dallas. His home was in Dallas. So he's from Texas, right? Okay, here was what I could say. And this worked quite a bit. When Al Gore was the vice president, I could say Tennessee. Okay, the vice president is from Texas. Or for Al Gore, the vice president is from Tennessee. And that was years ago. Okay, now, one of my students came up with another one because she worked in a bank. The vice president is over the teller. And that was nice because it's over the teller. And so that means it's on the box. Whatever does it for you. To, to memorize all this stuff. So let's take a look at this problem, and it tells us what gas we have. We have neon. And read through that. When we end up, if you followed the letter of the law for sig figs, just looking at that, what would you tell me for sigs? Two. Two. Two because of the 27, if we followed the letter of the law. Okay, now let's search through that. Well, you have to look for V1, P1, T1, V2, P2, T2. So let's analyze. Nikki in the back. What's V1? Uh, 105. 105 units? Liters. Liters. Okay. Then, Allison, what is T1? 1900. Oh, Okay. And what are you going to do? Plus 2, so Plus 273, and that gives us 300. Now, okay, we can dispute this. If you just look at that, you tell me two sig figs. But when you take 27 and you add it to this, the rule about adding is to have the same number of decimal places. So we would end up with this, which would kick us back up to three sigs. So in this answer, if you gave me two, you gave me three, I would settle for either. You could make an argument either way. Generally, in the test bank, that's not an issue. But if it were an issue, I would go either way. Okay, then we have our initial pressure. And Eddie, what's our initial pressure going to be? 985. 985. And units? Uh, Torque. Torque. Okay, now we're asking for V2, so we don't know that. And this is such a typical or classical problem here. We did this in the laboratory, and I'd like to compare my work with somebody else's work, so what volume would it be if we were under standard conditions? And that way, if the other person did the same thing, then we could make a direct comparison. Okay, so. STP. Now over there on our list, we have two different units. We gotta pick the right unit. So Liz, what's our P2? Um, it, be tor? it have to be Tor, so it would be the same one. Okay, so we're going to STP. See, this is where we started, but we're going to STP. STP pressure is one atmosphere or 760 Tor. But you got to pick the right units, so your friends are saying 760 tor. Everybody catch that? you got to be consistent. Standard pressure. If this is tor, that has to be tor in this combined gas law. Yeah, the reason, Andrew? Well, the reason it is 760 is because we're going to Yes, that's right. So this problem really tests you on two ideas. Do you know STP? And can you work 
a gas law problem. Yeah. So that's typical is that we need to insert the standards yep. for volume and pressure yep. too. Now, sometimes you'll see a problem. It will say, if we change the temperature to 35 Celsius and the pressure to 630 torque, what's the volume? But here it's saying, let's go to STP. So just whatever the change is. Now, our T2 here, since we're going to standard ammo, what's that going to be? Two seventy-three Kelvin because it's got to be Kelvin. Okay, we got everything we need, so let's come over here. One oh five and P one is nine eighty-five. T one is three hundred is equal to V two is what I don't know. P two is seven sixty. We already did our internal check that our units were okay. T2 is 273. Now, <clears throat> I don't know how many times I've seen my students get to this point and screw up on their calculators. And I think that's so sad to understand the chemistry but not be able to handle the math. So, if you are shaky on your math, I would, rec I would recommend you do a cross multiplication to clear it of fractions. So we would have 105 times 985 times 273 is equal to 300. V2, our unknown buried in there, times 760. And again, if you don't like your unknown over there, change this equation, turn the whole business around. So you're going to multiply these things together. You're going to multiply these things together and then whip it over here and divide into that. If you're slick on your calculator, it's one big operation. Okay, so our V2. Pedro, what'd you get? 124. 124, what are your units? Liters. They're liters because this was liters and I was too lazy to put all the units in there. Is that what other folks got? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Now, let's think about this for a moment. Let's see. Pressure's going down. Where should the volume go? If pressure goes down, what should happen to volume? Go up. Okay, but temperature is going down. What do we expect to happen to volume? Go down. We have opposing forces. We really can't predict who's going to win out. So when you have the combined gas law, you got to work through it all. Okay, then, real briefly, we won't go through a derivation. Avogadro's law, he held pressure and temperature constant. And this is section 12-8. What he found is that the volume of your gas is proportional to how much gas you have. Doesn't that make sense? And so, if you take all the laws together, and I wouldn't write this down, just watch and see if you can follow along. Okay, whose law was this? Boyle. Boyle. Okay. And whose law is this? Charles. Charles. Sometimes we do have a departmental final exam. And sometimes some of the other teachers love asking, is this Charles Law, is this Boyle's Law? Years ago when I was in high school, I had to memorize which was which. Okay, they both deal with volume. Boyle deals with pressure. And this was my memory device all those years ago. If you have a boil on your skin, now granted, it's not spelled the same as his name, but a boil on your skin, it causes pressure and pain. So, oil had to do with pressure. And then we happened to have a guy in our class named Charles, and he was a really good looking guy, so that had to do with temperature, heat, you know. So, <laughs> that's how I remember the two. So, we got a good looking guy, Charles, in this room, so he's a hot, hot seat, is that right? Can you say that for guys? I don't know. I guess you can, can't you? No one knows? Okay. All right. Well, anyway, that's how you can remember the two. And then, 
volume is also directly proportional to the number of moles you have. So that was Avogadro's that you heard ever so briefly. So if you put this all together, you would have volume is directly proportional to N times T over P. And then they rearranged, and they didn't like the proportionality, and they put in a proportionality constant, and they put it in this position, and that's what the R is. Now, the R value is 0 0.0821 liter times atmosphere per mole. Kelvin. Where, where do you think? <laughs> yeah, you think, God, I will never remember that. Okay. You don't have to, really. Here's what you need to do. When you stick in a proportionality constant, the units are just put on so everything cancels. So what this really means is if this is the R value you want, give me about one more minute here and then we'll write pressure. Okay, if you're going to use the pervert equation, that has to be atmospheres. This has to be liters. Okay, and you already know it has to be moles, and you already know if you're working with gases, that has to be Kelvin. That's where this weirdness comes from. Now, if you are stubborn, and you would really like to use pressure in Tor, you've got to memorize another R value. Or if you're stubborn, and you'd really rather work with milliliters, you've got to memorize another R. So my recommendation, just go with the flow. And if you would use atmospheres always, liters always, moles, and Kelvin, then this is the R you need to know. And the two sick things is enough. Okay, let's break now. 11:32. Back in the field.